Hey, what's cracking? How are you doing today? Hope this video finds you doing well. Hope that everything, my friend, is going your way. If it's the first time you've ever watched one of my videos, my name is Ricky Dye, and I went to prison when I was 15 years old in the state of Oklahoma for uh, second-degree murder. I was there for 20 and a half years before I got out. Uh, it started off, me and a couple kids would run away from home. We were going to rob a store, and ended up the clerk got killed, and the next thing you know, we are in prison. If you want to know all about the story, you can watch my videos from the beginning. So whenever I wanted to start these videos, my goal is to help other people, other kids, maybe not make the same mistake that I made with my life. And uh, a lot of the things I talk about, it doesn't matter the age you are. They still can uh, help you in your life every day. And uh, all of us have done something that could have wound us up in prison. Um, I can't do anything about my past. And so that's what the videos are for. Try to do something good with my life. So I want to thank you for clicking on the video. Uh, if you've been keeping up, uh, I like a, my, ser my videos are like a, a series. When I first started, I didn't know where to start. So just start at the beginning. You'll enjoy them best if you start at the beginning. Uh, the first five videos have kind of messed up sound, but I did get that sound improved. You can find those first five videos with corrected sound later on if you look for them in the videos. Uh, but I've been telling it chronologically as it happened. And I've just left Hinton Prison. I was in jail for, uh, in lockup, in solitary for 264 days. I made a video about it recently. And then I got out for less than a month. And I went right back to lockup. And I was in there 124 days. And I was then shipped to Cushing Prison. And that's where I'm going to pick up here pretty soon. Um, I expected to do a video yesterday with a friend of mine named Craig. A black man who did 22 years here in the state of Oklahoma. And he can tell you a lot of things that I can't tell you because he, he has a different perspective than I did. Uh, I was a little young white guy and he was a black guy. So um, his, his story is completely different than mine, but very interesting. And he needed some help setting his channel up. Friday, we're going to meet. I'm going to set his channel up. We're going to do a video together. I had expected to do that yesterday. And very soon I'll be doing a video with Chad Marks from Blood on the Razor Wire. Um, we just haven't had time yet to do the video, but it is in the works. So I thought today, I, uh, when I start Cushing stories, I'm going to do about three or four videos in that series of Cushing. I would like to do them all in a row. So I thought that what I would talk to you about today was uh, dental in prison. I haven't wanted to do a dental video because I don't like people looking at my teeth because it's a real sore point for me. Um, my teeth are all jacked up and it's because of prison. So a lot of things changed that, that during that 20 years I was in prison. When I first went to prison, I had, I think, a filling in one of my back teeth. Um, they hadn't had to go to the dentist a lot as a kid. I had just turned 15. And uh, I went to prison. And back then, they would give you fillings in your teeth when I first went in. And they would do it with these black fillings. I, I don't know if everyone else got black ones, but they were black. And they looked, they looked shitty, man. But that's what you got in prison. And uh, somewhere along the way, they lost the funding for that, uh, preventive dental. And uh, they lost the funding for that. So what it is now, if it hurts bad enough to pull it, we'll pull it. Otherwise, that's it. You can pull it or nothing. If it hurts bad enough to pull it, we'll pull it. Otherwise, we ain't doing nothing to it for you. So if you think you're going to end up in prison in the state of Oklahoma, and I don't know if it's any different in any other state, but in Oklahoma for sure, if you think you're going to prison, you better get your teeth fixed before you go. Because what happens is, I had, I had fillings in all my back ones. I ended up with fillings because I liked candy. Uh, I brushed my teeth all the time since I was a kid, twice a day at least. And uh, what got me to do that when I, from the age of 17 for sure, because one thing I feel like I was blessed with by growing up in prison, when you grow up as a young man, you learn things from your dad, if you have a good dad. And that's something I want to tell you that, yeah, if you're a man, and most of the people who watch my videos are men, let me tell you that the most important thing you can do as a human being is be a good parent. The most important thing you can do as a man is be a good dad. Because you look around, I've told my story, and I've had people tell me their stories, and you find a guy, and he's out there, and he works his ass off all the time, doesn't really want to go to the doctor, or take a day off, he wants to work. You find a man like that, he probably had a good dad that had a good work, work ethic. You look around, you see a guy doing pretty good in the world today. He probably had a good father or a father that was at least part of his life. You look around and you find guys who are in prison who are doing bad, who can't keep a job, who need help all the time. They probably didn't have a dad in their life.
So the most important thing you can do as a man is to be a good dad. Um, I can't stress that enough. And if you don't have kids of your own and you, you're around other kids, do your best to be good to those kids. Get down on their level. Look at them eye to eye and talk to them. Because even if they're not your kid, whatever you put into a kid, that's what you'll get out of him. A person is a good investment. Anything you put in, you'll get back out. Uh, that all, It always comes back around to you, man. So if you're an adult and you have a, a, a way to influence someone young, do that every chance you get. Uh, one day I was standing in the day room, and I guess I hadn't brushed my teeth. I had been neglected. I was 17 years old, and I'm trying to survive in prison. I wasn't thinking about my damn teeth, if you want to be honest. And there was this white guy. His name was Ricky Williams. I'll never forget him. Old convict, good white boy. And he uh, walked up to me, and he said, you're a good-looking kid, and this and that. He said, you don't take care of yourself. And it offended me. I said, what do you mean I don't take care of myself? He said, you got, you got stuff on your teeth. I said, I just ate. Yeah, yeah, you don't take good care of yourself. He said, you, you, you got good teeth. They should be clean all the time. And for the rest of my life, I've, bl I've brushed my teeth at least twice a day. But I end up with fillings back here in these back teeth while I was in prison. Uh, eating now and laters and smashing Jolly Ranchers and fireballs. And uh, then they cut out the preventive dental so that you could just get them pulled. And I'm eating these giant now and laters and stuff. And I pulled those fillings out so that it, the teeth then rot. Then you lose the back teeth. All you got is the front ones. But the front ones aren't made to grind with. <laughs> grind your teeth with, your food with, the way the back ones are. They're not made for that. So they get ground down. They get chipped up. They get broke. And you end up without no teeth. So over the next year, I'll probably end up getting these false teeth because it bothers me. I want to have a good smile. And I, I, don't, I don't like having broken chip teeth and uh, having, having a hard time eating and having to pick crap out of my, out of my mouth after I eat. So uh, the most important thing you can do to avoid all that is go to the dentist regularly and don't go to prison. You know what I'm saying? It's not that hard to follow the rules, to get a job and go do it every day. Uh, I used to want to look up to the people in my life that I thought was tough. But I'm going to tell you, man, who I look up to today is my stepdad. A guy gets up and he goes to work every day, regardless if he hurts or not. doesn't matter how he feels. He goes to work, takes care of his family. And that takes more heart, more guts than anything I've ever been through, even though I was in prison for 20 years. It takes more guts and more heart to get up and go to work every day to put up with shit, even though you don't want to, even when you don't feel like it, and be a man. If so if you want to be one of a kind, you want to be a soldier, you want to be a warrior, you do that. That'll make you a G, for real. And uh, the, the medical is the same way. If you need to go to medical, you, you, uh, they, they have what's called a request. It's like a request to staff is what you'd send for any other request. But it's, it has a disbursement slip attached to it. And you tell them, I need to go to, to medical, and this is the reason. And if it's just a headache. And then you sign your name on the bottom. And what, that, what if that's for? There's a pink slip attached for it, to it that they send to a canteen. And you owe $2 just for seeing them. Whenever you get the money. If you've got it, they take it now. If not, first money you get, they take it off. Same thing if you go to dental. So if you need two Tylenol, you owe $2 for seeing the nurse and $2 for the Tylenol. So you owe $4 for that two Tylenol. So people don't want to go to medical because they don't get a lot of money from home and they don't want to have to give it to medical. There's people who end up owing medical a bunch of money so they don't want their family to send them no money. So they send it to someone else. Try to try, And that's illegal, but they want to send it to someone else's books or try to send it somewhere for drugs because they owe medical so much money from when they have to go down there and get help. And uh, if you're a medium, medium security and you have a terminal disease, They'll put you over at Joe Harp. They have a unit called the death unit. And that's where you live if you're terminal and waiting to die. And they will hire someone. That'll be their, their job. Will be to push you around uh, to be your caretaker. They'll push you to, to the pill line three, day, three times a day. They will push you up to uh, get your chow three times a day or any appointment you have to keep. They'll push you around. And if they do that, they'll get their $12 a month for being your caretaker. So even if you're going to die, they've got a place for you. Um, so, man, just try to stay out of trouble, man. Don't, don't do it, man. Don't make you a G to go to prison, man. Make sure you a G to take, 
take care of your business and your family. Uh, today will be a short video because I do plan on putting a video up with Craig. Uh, I went to the doctor today, got it all clear for my surgery. Uh, everything's good, healthy, and now I can live 50 more years. It's all good, man. I want to thank everyone for your well wishes, your thoughts, and your prayers. Um, so from now on, I'll be trying to put up a video every three days. Um, today's Wednesday. I'll have one up uh, Saturday. And if I'm not able to do one with Craig, I'll jump on into my story in Cushing. I just wanted to keep those in a row. And because uh, whenever you're doing YouTube videos, you put one up every three days, the algorithm kind of blesses you. And I was getting a lot of views and I was doing well. And then I had the surgery and I was off a week and now it's like starting all over. So I uh, appreciate if you guys share the videos, make sure you watch them to the end. Hit that likes up button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Uh, if you need anything done construction wise in the, in the United States, he works all over the United States. Mid-American construction is your thing, man. Google Middle American Construction. Ben Seaborn owns that. This is the most honest guy. He's going to give you a fair price. He's going to make sure you get a good job. The work will be done. They're licensed and bonded. You don't have to be worried about being cheated for anything. So if you need some construction work done, Ben Seaborn. If you haven't checked out uh, Brandon Bond's videos yet, the link's in the description. He's a veteran. He did eight years in uh, the military. He went straight in to Afghanistan right out of high school. So if you're young and you're thinking about going to the military, you need to watch his videos. If you are just older and you didn't go to the military and you wonder what it would have been like to go to the military straight out of high school, he's telling his story just like I've been telling mine. And I appreciate if you guys support him. Uh, shout out to the riders and dyers. The riders who ride till the wheels fall off and the dyers keep riding even when they do. I'm waiting on your shirts. I haven't forgot you. I love you guys the most. Hope to see you in the next video. And until then, may God bless, keep, and protect each one of you. Peace out.